Welcome back stormwater designers to our EPA swim training series and um, today we're going to the last part of this EPA swim tutorial. It's going to be covering how to run a continuous simulation in EPA swim. Now this isn't the best or most perfect way of running continuous simulation but it can be done in EPA swim and later I'm going to show you uh, a better way to do it but we're going to uh, finish this tutorial here. So it says, as a final exercise in this tutorial, we will demonstrate how to run a long-term continuous simulation using a historical rainfall record and how to perform a statistical frequency analysis on the result. The rainfall record will come from a file named uh, stat310301.dat, which is included in the example set uh, data sets provided with EPA SWIM. It contains several years of hour hourly rainfall beginning in January of 1998. The data are stored in the National Cli uh, Climatic Data Centers DSI 32040 format, which SWIM can automatically recognize. So to set up and run this continuous simulation with the rainfall record, we're going to select the rain gauge gauge one uh, into the property editor here. Change the selection of data source to file. So edit here. Data source. We're going to select file. Select the file name data field and click the ellipses button or press the enter key here. Okay, so file name data field. Right there. And so select the file name data field and click the ellipses button or press the enter key to bring up the windows. Navigate to the folder where the swim example files are stored. I got to find out where swim is exactly on my computer here. EPA swim project samples. There's the data file right there and click open or select the file. Okay. So selected, select the options category in the project browser and click the edit button to bring up the simulation options form. The selection options category in the project browser. Right here, edit. We're going to there. On the general page of the form, select kinematic wave as the routing method. You go kinematic wave. On the dates page of the form, set both the start analysis and start reporting dates to uh, January 1st, 1998. Let's go to dates here. We want to set it to January 1st, 1998. For both of these. Oh, and I'll oh, set the end analysis to uh, January 1st, 2000, excuse me, the 2000. On the time step page of the forms, set the routing time step to 300 seconds. We'll go 300 um, time step. Oh, I'll go cancel. Change that appropriately here. Matic. Let's try that again. Three hundred seconds there. Close the simulation options by clicking OK. And let's go. Let's run this continuous simulation now. And then we're going to perform the frequency analysis. It looks like it's completed. After our continuous simulation is completed, we can perform a statistical frequency analysis on any of the variables produced as output. For example, to determine the distribution of rainfall volumes within each storm event over the two year period simulates. So we're going to select report and statistic. 
In the statistics selection form that appears, enter the values as shown below. We're going to enter system, precipitation, event dependent, total, and then 006. This will identify the rainfall volume for each event, which is separated by six or more hours within rainfall. Click OK. The results of this request will be a statistics report form containing, our, containing four tab pages, a summary page, an events page, the histogram and of the occurrence frequency versus event magnitude and frequency plot page that plot event magnitude versus cumulative frequency. The summary page shows that there was a total of 213 rainfall events. The events page shows that the largest rainfall event had a volume of 3.35 inches and occurred over a 24 hour period. There were no events that matched the three inch six hour design storm event used in our previous single event analysis which had produced some internal flooding. In fact, the status report for the continuous simulation in indicates that there were no flooding or surcharge occurrences over the simulation period. So you can see the different precipitation graphs here. That's a quick uh, example of some continuous simulation. It's done better in uh, WimSwim, which I'll show you in the next part of the series. If you wanna see a better way to do this, if you wanna set up um, HSPF modeling and combine it with swim modeling, to create a really cohesive result, I would watch part eight of the series. But that is the tutorial. We have finished it. We've only touched the surface of Swim's capabilities. We hope I hope to do more videos on some of the more capabilities in Swim. Those are just covering the tutorials. As you can see, there's a lot to do here. Utilizing the drainage elements, control, control rules, modeling snowfall. There's a lot to touch on here. I hope to cover all of it. So thank you for watching this, uh, this part of the series. You'll want to see the next video for how to take continuous simulation modeling. Uh, to the next level in Wimswim. Um, but thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.